Stablecoins and Ethereum boast an estimated $20 billion in liquidity, and they show no signs of slowing down in growth. If you've used DAI, SUSD, USDC, or USDT, otherwise known as Tether, you know how important and useful stablecoins are. They come in all varieties, flavors, and smells. Decentralized versus centralized, backed one-to-one -one by dollars versus over collateralized versus reportedly under collateralized. No idea who we're talking about there. However, there's been fierce competition to create the purest, most decentralized, most reliable dollar pegged stablecoin in DeFi. Some argue it's MakerDAO's DAI versus other who prefer the newer SUSD created by staking SNX on synthetics. In DeFi, it's always about what's next? What's next, Alp? He doesn't know. Nobody knows. And in the case of stablecoins, what next? Well, it appears to be algorithmic stablecoins. Well, what the heck is an algorithmic stablecoin? I'm going to tell you. Algorithmic stablecoins tend to attract two types of people. Those interested in bootstrapping a censorship resistant stablecoin, you know, the DeFi dreamers, and those financially incentivized by the reward of holding a token that rewards you with compounding daily returns whenever it's above the dollar peg. Now it's worth noting algorithmic stablecoins like ESD or DSD have boasted returns of two to 3% interest compounding every two to eight hours, meaning as high as 3000% APY. That is a lot. Algorithmic stablecoin protocols like Empty Set ESD are designed to bring the native token back to $1 while market cap grows due to demand from those participating. So your burning question should be, how does an algorithmic stablecoin remain, yeah, stable? Well, in the case of Empty Set Dollar, it establishes a voluntary supply expansion and contraction that helps bring an ESD back to its dollar peg. This means if you hold ESD, you can do one of three things, depending on the price of ESD and one's risk tolerance. So you can hold and do nothing, or hold bonded ESD and earn more ESD, or you can burn ESD for coupons. If participants early on earn more rewards, then we have a larger market cap from newly minted stablecoins, and more liquidity means more participants can take part. And more participants means more network effects, growing attention around the stablecoin, and hence more demand for the stablecoin, and more minting of stablecoins to bring the stablecoin back to peg, and so on and so forth. If your head's spinning, mine isn't, but it sort of is, it should. There's a tremendous amount of game theory Andre like Ponzinomics and high risk money games at stake with algorithmic stablecoins. And that being said, they are here and they are growing in popularity. If just one could succeed as a censorship resistant stablecoin, try saying that fast. Many believe all this experimentation will be worth it. Now the key takeaway here is that algorithmic stablecoins demonstrate more of the bleeding edge financial experimentation in DeFi. A good thing or a bad thing, I don't know, but experimentation generally is a good thing. And whether it's innovation or short-sighted gambling, we don't know yet. In light of recent regulatory scares in the US about stablecoin regulation, the idea of a censorship-resistant stablecoin, I still can't say it, has huge demand in DeFi. But it's impossible not to ignore the epic incentives these early adopters enjoy to help maintain the dollar peg of newly minted stablecoins with market caps anywhere from a few million to near $500 million in the case of empty set. And just imagine being rewarded by the Federal Reserve for keeping the dollar worth a dollar. That would be wild, but that's effectively what this is. You've been watching DeFi 101, do be sure and check out the other videos in this series and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the new videos as they drop. And above all, stay safe out there.